Hi guys. All right, we're ready for our mystery continent of the day. Are you ready? So the first item that's in my mystery bag is a giraffe. So giraffes are animals that live on this continent. You might already have an idea of where we're going. And then our last item in the bag is an elephant. So what continents can you find giraffes and elephants on? Let's see if you're right. Are you ready? We are going to be visiting Africa. All right, so Africa is the second largest continent. The only continent that's bigger than Africa is Asia. It has 54 different countries. The Nile River is in Egypt, is in Egypt, is the longest river in the world. And then part of Africa is above the equator and part of it's below. And then it has some very fast animals. It has the cheetah, the wildebeest, the lion, and the gazelle. So these animals have to be fast because they either have to be a really good predator and be fast to catch their prey, or if they're prey, they have to be really fast to get away from those fast predators. All right, so the story that we're going to read today is called Mufaro's Beautiful Daughters, and it's an African tale by John Steptoe. All right. It says, a long time ago in a certain place in Africa, a small village lay across a river and a half day's journey from a city where a great king lived. A man named Mufaro lived in the village with his two daughters, who were called Manyara and Nyasha. Everyone agreed that Manyara and Nyasha were beautiful. Manyara was almost always in a bad temper. She teased her sister whenever their father's back was turned. And she had been heard to say, someday, Nyasha, I will be queen and you will be a servant in my household. If that should come to pass, Nyasha responded, I will be pleased to serve you. But why do you say such things? You are clever and strong and beautiful. Why are you so unhappy? Because everyone talks about how kind you are and they praise everything that you do, Manyara replied. I'm certain that father loves you best. But when I am queen, everyone will know that your silly kindness is only weakness. Nyasha was sad that Manyara felt this way, but she ignores her sister's words and went about her chores. Nyasha kept a small plot of land on which she grew millet, sunflowers, yams, and vegetables. She always sang as she worked, and some said it was her singing that made her crops more bountiful than anyone else. One day, Nyasha noticed a small garden snake resting beneath a yam vine. Good day, little Nyoka, she called to him. You are welcome here. You will keep away any creatures who might spoil my vegetables. She bent forward, gave the little snake a loving pat on the head, and then returned to work. From that day on, Nyoka was always at Nyasha's side when she tended her garden. It was said that she sang all the most sweetly when he was there. So she's kind even to the snakes. Mufaro knew nothing of how Manyara treated Nyasha. Mufaro knew nothing of how Manyara treated Nyasha. Nyasha was too considerate to her father's feelings to complain, and Manyara was always careful to behave herself when Mufaro was around. Early one morning, a messenger from the city arrived. The great king wanted a wife. The most worthy and beautiful daughters in the land are invited to appear before the king, he, and he will choose one to become queen, the messenger proclaimed. Mufaro called Manyara and Nyasha to him. It would be a great honor to have one of you chosen, he said. Prepare yourselves to journey to the city. I will call together all of our friends to make a wedding party and we will leave tomorrow as soon as the sun rises. But my father, Manyara, said sweetly, it would be painful for either of us to leave you, even to be a wife to the king. I know Nyasha would grieve to death that she was parted from you. I am strong. Send me to the city and let poor Nyasha be happy for you here. Mufaro beamed with pride. The king has asked for the most worthy and most beautiful. No, Manyara, I cannot send you alone. Only a king can choose between two such worthy daughters. Both of you must go. So Manyara tried to get it to where her father didn't send Nyasha at all, and it didn't work. 
That night, when everyone was asleep, Manyara stole quietly out of the village. She had never been in the forest at night before and she was frightened, but her greed to be the first to appear before the king drove her on. In her hurry, she almost stumbled over a small boy who appeared suddenly standing in the path. Please, said the boy, I am hungry. Will you give me something to eat? I have brought only enough for myself, Manyara replied. Oh, please, said the boy, I am so very hungry. Out of my way, boy. Tomorrow I will be your queen. How dare you stand in my path? After traveling what seemed a great distance, Manyara came to a small clearing. There, silhouetted against the moonlight, was an old woman seated on a large stone. Soon after you pass this place, there will be two paths. You will see a grove of trees. They will laugh at you. You must not laugh at them in return. Later, you will meet a man with his head under his arm. You must be polite to him. How do you know my name? How dare you advise your future queen? Stand aside, you old woman, Manyara scolded, and then rushed on her way without looking back. Just as the old woman had foretold, Manyara came to a grove of trees, and they did indeed seem to be laughing at her. I must be calm, Manyara thought. I will not be frightened. She looked at the trees and laughed out loud. I laugh at you trees, she shouted, and she hurried on. It was not yet dawn when Manyara heard the sound of rushing water. The river must be up ahead, she thought. The great city is just on the other side. But there on the rise, she saw a man with his head tucked under his arm. Manyara ran past him without speaking. A queen acknowledges only those who please her, she said to herself. I will be clean, I will be clean, she ch chanted as she hurried towards the city. Nyoka woke up at first light at dawn and she put on her finest garments. She thought of how her life might be changed forever beyond this day. I'd much prefer to live here, she admitted to herself. I'd hate to leave this village and never see my father or sing to little Nyoka, Nyoka again. Her thoughts were interrupted by loud shouts and a commotion from the wedding party. Manyara was missing. Everyone bustled about searching and calling for her. When they found her footprints on the path that led to the city, they decided to go on as planned. As the wedding party moved through the forest, brightly plumed birds darted about in a cool green shadows beneath the trees. Though anxious about her sister, Nyasha was soon filled with excitement about what she would see. They were deep in the forest when she saw a small boy standing on the side of the path. Oh, you must be hungry, she said, and handed him a yam that he had brought for her lunch. The boy smiled and disappeared as quietly as he had come. Later, as they were approaching a place where the two paths crossed, the old woman appeared and silently pointed towards the city. Nyasha thanked her and gave her a small pouch filled with sunflower seeds. The sun was high in the sky when the party came to the grove of towering trees. Their uppermost branches seemed to bow down to Nyasha as she passed beneath them. At last, someone announced that they were near their destination. Nyasha ran ahead and topped the rise before the others could catch up with her. She stood transfixed. That means she's amazed. At her first sight of the city, oh, my father, she cried, a great spirit must stand guard here. Just look at what lies behind before us. I have never in all my life dreamed there could be anything so beautiful. Arm in arm, Nyasha and her father descended the hill, crossed the river, and approached the city gate. Just as they entered through the great doors, the air was rent by piercing cries, and Manyara ran wildly out of the chamber at the center of the enclosure. When she saw Nyasha, she fell upon her sobbing. Do not go to the king, my sister. Oh, please, father, do not let her go, she cried hysterically. There is a great monster in there, a snake with five heads. He said that he knew all my faults and that I displeased him. He would have swallowed me alive if I had not run. Oh, please, sister, do not go into the palace. It frightened Nyasha to see her sister so upset. But leaving her father to comfort Manyara, she bravely made her way to the chamber and opened the door. On the seat of the great chief's stool lay the little green garden snake. Nyasha laughed. 
with relief and joy. My little friend, she exclaimed, it's such a pleasure to see you, but why are you here? I am the king, Nyoka replied, and there before Nyasha's eyes, the garden changed, snake changed into a handsome man. I am the king. I am also the hungry boy from whom you shared a yam with in the forest and the old woman to whom you made a gift of sunflower seeds. But you know me best of Nyoka, because I have been all of these things. I know that you are the most worthy and most beautiful daughter in all the land. It would make me very happy if you would be my wife. And so it was that, a long time ago, Nyasha agreed to be married. The king's mother and sisters took Nyasha to their home, and the wedding preparations began. The best weavers in the land laid out the finest cloth for her wedding garments. Villagers from all around were invited to the celebration, and a great feast was held. Nyasha prepared the bread for the wedding feast from millet that had been brought from her own village. Mufaro proclaimed to all that would hear that he was the happiest father in the land, for he was blessed with two beautiful and worthy daughters, Nyasha the queen and Manyara the servant to the queen. So in the end, remember, the one sister kept saying that she was going to be the queen and that sister was going to be servant, and it ended up being this, the opposite way. All right, guys, so I, what you're going to do now is you're going to connect to Seesaw, and you are going to be trying to think about the ways that this story is different than some of the other stories you read. How is the main character different? How is she the same? What looks different in the book? So you can pick any of those things to tell me that's different or the same and record them in Seesaw. All right, guys, thanks for listening.